We'll end our videos on the chain rule by looking at a couple of important special cases that are going to allow us to extend some of the results we've already seen. Um, so you'll remember that if you take the derivative of the exponential function, you just get the same thing back. We've seen that now a few times. Now we've also seen, we've seen at least in an example, this pattern here. If you want to take the derivative of an exponential function where you have, you know, the exponent is, is not just x, but some function of x, chain rule says, right, f prime is still that same exponential function. So this remains the same, but then you multiply by the derivative of the exponent. So we have this general pattern for taking derivatives of exponentials. Um, similarly, we know that if you take the derivative of the natural log, you get 1 over x. And so if you were taking the natural log of some other differentiable function, well, then you should get 1 over that function. All right, that's the derivative of the outside multiplied by the derivative of the inside. So you get g prime over g. Um, so these are useful patterns to remember. They come up fairly frequently. And so once you've seen them a few times, you probably get used to them and you start remembering them. Um, now, we do encounter both exponential and logarithmic functions to other bases, right? Um, so we say, well, what about if we wanted to take the derivative of, let's say, the base a log of x? Right? Well, this is actually pretty easy because we have a change of base formula that says this could be written as the natural log of x divided by the natural log of a. And this 1 over natural log of a is just a constant multiple. So you can bring that outside and then multiply by the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. Okay, well, what about if I'm doing the derivative of, of say, a to the x? Or let's, let's keep it simple. Let's look at 2, two to the x. Um, so let's consider y equals 2 to the x. Okay, so we have an exponential to some other base. Now, you'll remember that there's a trick you can use if you want to work with the natural exponential and the natural logarithm when you've got another base involved. You can use the fact that these two functions are inverses of each other. Um, so if you take the natural log and then you use that as an exponent, those cancel out, you get the same thing back. And this is useful because one of the properties of logarithms is that this exponent can come down in front. So we can write this as e to the x times the natural log of 2. Okay, well this is useful because here we have an exponent which is not quite x, it's a multiple of x, but we can think of this as like our f of x in the pattern above. So if I wanted to know what y prime is, all right, well, y prime is simply going to be, it's going to be e to the x times the natural log of 2 multiplied by the derivative of this. But this is just a multiple of x, right? So we get the derivative of x, which is just 1, times the multiple. So we get the natural log of 2. But uh, one last thing. We, we see here that this e to the x times the natural log of 2, that was just 2, two to the x, right? So what we get is 2 to the x multiplied by the natural log of 2, right? So when you take the derivative of a log to some other base, you divide by the natural log of that base. When you take the derivative of an exponential with some other base, uh, you multiply by the natural log of that base, right? And you could easily replace 2 by any other base a here. You'll have the same result, a to the x times the natural log of a. Okay? Now, there, there's one other related thing that we can do here, uh, which is if um, we let f of x equal 
x to the a, where a is any real number. Well, how do you define this function? How do you define powers which are, which are real numbers, right? We know how to do integer powers. We even know how to do rational powers, right? Because if we have a rational power, we know that you, you know, the, the numerator is, is going to be a power, the denominator is a root, and it doesn't matter which order you do those in. But if a is any real number, how do you actually define that, right? So there are some ways you can do it, but one of the ways you can do it is you actually take as a definition that you define this as f of x is equal to, well, again, just as sort of a, an aside, we can do the same trick, right? If we did e to the log of x to the a, right? That should be the same thing as x to the a because these are inverses and they cancel out. Um, but again, log properties say you can bring the exponent down in front. Uh, so you will find that some textbooks actually take this as the definition of a general power function, right? Where a could be any real number exponent. They'll say f of x, this x to the a is actually defined as e to the a times the natural log of x. And you might even see that as a definition, right? And when a is a, an integer or a rational number, this is equivalent to our usual understanding of a power function, right? Because we can bring the a up into the exponent, then the e and the natural log, they cancel out. They give you back x to the a, okay? Well, if that's true, then what's f prime of x? Well, again, we can use this pattern here. It's going to be e to the a times log x, right? Times the derivative of the exponent. So times the derivative of a times log x. All right. Once again, we can say, well, this was equivalent to that, right? So this is just a fancy way of writing x to the a. So we say, okay, there's x to the a, all right. What do we have here? Well, a is just a constant multiple, so that sticks around, and we multiply by the derivative of the natural log, which is 1 over x, right? Or x to the minus 1. So if I have x to the a, and I divide by x, what do I get? Well, I subtract 1 from the exponent. So if I bring that constant out front, what I have is a times x to the a minus 1, just like we had in all the other cases for the power rule. So in fact, the power rule is true for any real number, not just for integers, but for any real number. And you can establish that fact using the chain rule and logarithms. <coughs>